Hello guys, today I will tell you 14 Laravel Livewire tips based on the work I've done in January on my Livewire kit components and I've been tweeting and sharing random tips about Livewire on Twitter, on YouTube and elsewhere and in this video I've decided to compile them in one video for those of you who may have missed them or maybe haven't seen them at all. So let's begin. Tip number one. And this is a bit non-traditional method of showing the tips. I won't show PHP Storm and ID. I will just show the actual posts that I've done on social media, but they are pretty much the same showing ID. So tip number one, if you want to set the value of some component property, you don't need to have a special method. Instead of doing set vote, you can do dollar set variable name and new value. That's it. Tip number two, really similar with toggle. If that property of yours is boolean true or false, then again, you don't need a method, you need a dollar toggle and the value would be toggled true or false. In this case, in this example, probably the best way to show or hide stuff is Alpine.js, but general for any boolean properties, toggle is the way to go. Tip number three is about validation, really similar to Laravel validation. In Livewire validation rules, you can add validation attributes and instead of email is required, it will show whatever it is here. So the email address is required. It's just for customizing or translating variable names in more readable human format. Tip number four, I found it pretty randomly while rereading Livewire docs you can have div wire offline and if connection is going down then users should see that text. Really simple but really useful. Tip number five, if you have some refresh with quite a lot of data and it is time consuming, you can create div wire loading with some kind of placeholder or div or some styling and it would appear whenever the request is in progress but also you can specify that with wire loading delay that it would appear only if it takes more than 0.2 seconds. This is not customizable for some reason. I guess it should be changed in the future, but 200 milliseconds is pretty long time in the web. So wire loading delay is quite a cool thing. Tip number six, if you have a delete button or some button that needs confirmation and you want to use JavaScript on click return confirm, by default it wouldn't work. And in general, Laravel Livewire is not that friendly with any JavaScript or jQuery libraries, so you would encounter quite a lot of clashes between Livewire and JavaScript because they are in conflict of performing the same action quite often of re-rendering something. So for this specific case, you can do on click confirm and then event stop immediate propagation. I found it while reading one of the Livewire issues in the official repository. Tip number seven is one of the biggest problem that people say about Livewire is that it makes too much server requests, so you can customize that. By default, it makes a request every 150 millisecond, but you can customize that by doing wire model debounce two seconds or something like that. Also, there are two more ways to customize that. There's wire model lazy and wire model defer. You can look it up in the official documentation. Tip number eight, if you decided to rename your component for whatever reason, instead of renaming both component and the blade file, there's a artisan command, live wire move, old name, new name, and it will rename both files. Just a quick useful helper. Tip number nine, if you are doing make live wire command, it generates the component according to some template and you can customize that template. If you run artisan live wire stubs, it would publish the stubs and you could customize them however you want. Tip number 10 is about what happens after the form is submitted and result is processed and you need to empty the form inputs. And I see a lot of people do something like this. So just property is empty, but there's a method called this reset, which resets all the variables to their initial state. Or you can do that one by one, this reset variable name, property name. But be careful if you're using mount method, because that reset sets the variable to values before the mount. Tip number 11. If you have a lot of components structured by subfolders, there are three ways how you can create a component in a subfolder. So forward slash backslash wouldn't work because it creates post slash create as post create. So if you want a subfolder, it has two backslashes or you can use a dot notation with lowercase referencing the blade file. So Livewire would kind of understand that you're referencing blade and from that would generate the name with uppercase for a subfolder. 
Tip number 12, it's a really long one, not sure if it's readable, but it's an example how to use Livewire without Laravel component. I see a lot of people use Livewire for small chunks of the page. So they have Laravel controller, Laravel view, and inside of that, at Livewire something. But if your Livewire component is basically full page or most of it, it may be better to do route get directly to Livewire component. You can find more information in official documentation by full page components. Tip number 13 is about pagination. And if you use Bootstrap, keep in mind that Laravel Livewire pagination comes with Tailwind CSS by default. Luckily, it's easy to customize with just one property, pagination theme Bootstrap. And finally, tip number 14 for those of you who start with Laravel Livewire and you're not sure if it would work in your project, in your older project. Here are the requirements from official composer JSON. So Livewire would work with Laravel 7 and above on PHP 7.2.5 and above. And that's it. Some of those tips are applied while I was creating Laravel Livewire components kit. So if you started with Livewire but need more practice with what things exactly could be created with Laravel Livewire, like live updates, dialogues for pop-ups, multi-step form, inline editing and more, check out Livewire Kit. You can purchase all the components for single price, including future updates. And see you guys in other videos.